Now, everyone knows that women are likely to end up making less money than their male counterparts, but what people aren't taking into consideration is that in addition to wages, they also have biological differences that further increase that gap. You know, I've been saying this forever, that while men can just brew a cup of coffee or buy one for a buck, yep. women have a constant craving that can only be satisfied by a caffeinated beverage that costs eight, nine, or even ten plus dollars. You know, some will call it stupid tax, but what's actually stupid is that men won't acknowledge we have the luxury to not have an internal voice forcing you to drive seven minutes out of your way and then wait in a ten minute line up despite my objections to drop 16 greenbacks on a cup of joe and a slice of banana bread. And it's not just coffee choices they're plagued with. The yeah. other day, me and Gail were having a quick dinner, decide to have an alcoholic beverage or two. I tell them, I'll grab whatever lager they got on tap. Luxury men have. And then I just have to watch as this woman's genetic code takes over her body as she demands to look at the cocktail menu Ooh. and continues to order multiple drinks starting at $14.99 with names I hope to never see again. That'll cost you. Naturally, I give her a look of disgust, but really I'm disgusted at nature for cursing them with the inability to drink a reasonably priced beverage. The unfair advantage is constantly rearing its head. I remember the first day Megan and I went grocery shopping. Walking through the aisles, I have my eyes peeled for red bargain tags. How else would you know what to buy? And I just have this terrible male guilt in the pit of my stomach as I watch her just throw various meats and cheeses into the cart, unable to discern which brands are on sale and which brands are being purchased at full price. Now just to be clear, is it possible that maybe she's pranking you? You know, that is what I thought at first. So naturally I started putting them back on the shelf and explaining her the concept of an on-sale item and in addition to being very unreceptive to the idea she then went on to buy one single box of a granola based cereal not only sandwiched between two different on-sale no-name options but also marked with a buy one get the second half off promotion you know i still have nightmares about the time that gail bought a 120 dollars wagyu strip loin and then cooked it well done they also don't like drinking tap water the boys the boys the dudes prepare the cell for boys' cast. The bros, the boys' cast. The homies, the boys' cast. The dudes, the boys' cast. The boys' cast. Boston tickets are officially on sale. Ryan Long, comedy.com, the Wilbur Theater. And then this weekend, I'm going to be in fucking Berta, boys. Fucking Berta. Oh, Los Angeles. Then we're going to Irvine. We got San Jose. And then Phoenix, Denver, Toronto, Dublin, London, Antwerp, a bunch of other places. You know what I'm saying? Fucking Mark some barn. Mark some barn down there. Just pop over to RyanLongComedy.com and just fucking give her. Eh? Just, you know, when it starts to ask you how much you put in there, you just put the dollar amount there in there, press play, and then fucking next thing you know, you're at the show with the boys, eh? Yeah. Just fucking tuned oh, up. Yeah. Now listen. Here at the Boys Cast, you might have watched that there is a conflict going on in Israel and Palestine. And we're not here to talk about that the whole episode. Actually, we're not gonna talk about it that much. But there is something that to be said that people a lot oftentimes say, Oh, these soldiers are brave. Mm -hmm. You know, you see people coming back from the military and they go, That's brave. Very brave. Brave of him to go fight for, the only people who, for your country. Yeah, like the that. only times people say stuff's brave is when uh, you come back from the army or if they catch you at a comedy show and they go, That's really brave. It's of brave you of you. To yes. Do comedy. And you go, No, you don't get it. It's actually brave of me to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not brave to do it. It's that I continue along this path. That's I would actually say the bravery would be quitting, but then we're going to be besides <laughs> the point. <laughs> the people that don't get credit is the real brave people. And again, I'm not saying soldiers aren't brave. I'm just saying it pales in comparison to the bravery of Megan Fox, who ignored SAG Halloween rules, defiantly tags Union in her costume post. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you saw this, but the Union basically said, listen, actors. She's got some cojones. She, she spit in their face, dude. You got the fucking balls to stand up to sag like that? <laughs> I don't think so. You fucking, you don't have a cojone in your family. If you put your cojones together, no, you wouldn't no, have cojones like that. Not a like cojone that. in sight. Not a cojone in sight like that. I'm surprised Megan, I'm surprised Megan, Fo you know what? I'll, I'll go one further, by the way. Just yeah. every Megan is brave. Oh, yeah, Megan yeah, Fox yeah. is brave. Megan Merkel is brave. I don't think I've ever met a Megan that isn't dripping in bravery. That's, that's a good point. So it is a good point. There's a lot of brave Megans. I can't think of any more, but I'm guaranteeing you there's more brave Megans out Megan's there. Megan's Law? Megan's Law? What's that? It's a girl who got abducted and they passed the law. Brave! Very brave. That's just literally um, brave. <laughs> Seg comes out and they go, listen, <laughs> actors, what, what's happening here is until this strike, we're fighting the man right now, so no one wear any costumes. <laughs> 
Because you know, nobody's like, going to Darth Vader, no Bill Cosby, none of it. Because we're not promoting that shit. Sure. He goes, they go, oh, I bet you those movie studios would love it. Yeah. If you went out there wearing Batman, promoting their Batman franchises. Oh, I'm sure Tarantino woke up and he goes, what are these Kill Bill residuals? What's going on? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> In the last 48 hours that I'm getting all these crazy Kill Bill residuals, the answer is the defiant and brave (laughs) Megan Fox. And you know what? Some people do bravery like this, and the they might do something along these lines where they, you know, let's say that you were uh, you were going to be a soldier. Sure. But you don't really go out there on the front lines and fight. You're kind of just in your house saying, like, I support America. Yeah. And you go, what does that mean? You go, oh, you technically support, but you haven't done anything. She tagged these people. Oh, yeah. We're talking in their face. Yeah, oh, yeah. A little, a little bit of the come get some. She says, come get some. She's got two birds Oof. right up to the SAG Actra. Oof. And she, by the way, she's on the side of SAG Actra. I should mention that. Yeah, she's on the side of SAG Actra, but she's also on the side of I won't be told. No what one's to gonna do. tell Megan Fox what the fuck no, to do. No. So she wore a studio costume after specifically told not to. And by the way, uh, there's other people that are equally as brave. Almost every actor didn't like this as well. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of tweets from every actor being like, "This might be overkill." Sure, but they weren't as brave as her, where they no. actually did it and tagged no. them. Thumbing. Thumbing, thumbed them. Right, you know? She thumbed them. Thumbed them. Yeah. So I just want to say a shout out to that. SAG's policy was likely more concerned with giving recent blockbusters like Barbie and Super Mario. So they're trying to downplay her accomplishment right now. Yeah, yeah. They're sort of saying, well, the studios didn't actually care that much. I love how they they're like, they don't, the IP of Mario Brothers. They go, we don't want you going as Mario. Nobody can go as Mario. No Luigi. You go, there's more to this than just the movie. No. No. Like, you, th- you think someone goes like, Hey, what's also, that guy yeah, with the what's that guy with like the red hat and the mustache? What is that? And someone goes, "That's Mario." And they go, "And?" And they go, "There's a movie." You go, "Really? I have to watch Fuck this." You. Fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. What have I been doing for the last year of my life? Never heard of this Mario. That there's a Mario movie playing. Luckily, these Hollywood actors with their costumes cuz they knew so mm-hmm. it's very they're trying to downplay it a little bit being like, "Well, they, they didn't even care if you want to do all those like that." Thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Um, the stick in your mind service. Do you think when she walked into this like A list Hollywood party or whatever, everybody just kind of? I think so. And then when they, so I the think music turned off. Well, I think they started clapping and they were kind of dumbfounded. But then when they pulled up their phone and saw that she actually tagged actor, I think they dropped their phone and it dropped in slow motion. And then I think what happened too is you kind of. Uh, the phone was dropping in slow motion, yeah. and then a guy's wife just slapped him um, because Ryan. she was, you know, she was sort of hyped up, being like, "You'll never be half the man that all the Megans are combined." Not, not to be that guy, but in solidarity with Hollywood, we can't reference. They invented the phone dropping in slow motion. Don't reference that, sir. I don't have their balls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, I accidentally have to do it, but if you told me beforehand, I don't want you yeah, mentioning phones. The, that's phone Hollywood. drops. That would have thing. And that's by the way, that's not all the people that are brave. There's more people. You, Danny might be sitting here thinking, like, well. Sure. There's one person more brave than the Israel Palestine uh, militants. But there's actually more than one person brave. Mm-hmm. The Tinder swindler is the ultimate the swindler. Braver. So some people. He's still swindling. He's still swindling. That's crazy that he's still swindling. This is probably one of the most bravest acts I've ever seen <laughs> and the best thing I've ever seen. According to testimonies from the soldiers, the Tinder con artist, Simon Laviv, arrived today at one of the bases to give food to the soldiers. Kind of a brave Because he lives act. back in Israel now. He got, yeah. he got the boot he got the boot he's back in israel and you know some people have said that he's back to his old ways some people say he's still swindling (laughs) he's like my enemies are after me what enemies he goes hamas hamas You need to send me money. No, wait, your, your enemies are Hamas now? He goes, yes, I have very powerful enemies. You don't understand. If I don't get... I need a full <laughs> bank account. It's the only way to fight Hamas. This is to the U.S. government. He's in Congress. He goes, my enemies are after me. <laughs> yeah, money. they get him out there uh, uh, petitioning I mean, for more money. I mean, kind of Netanyahu's like the new Tinder swindler. He's like, my enemies are after me. I need more money. <laughs> You don't understand. We need so much money. My enemies are after me. <laughs> Zelensky's a little bit of a Tinder yeah, swindler a little, himself. So, yeah, yeah. There's definitely a couple of Tinder swindlers. Oh, yeah. So then he goes to the base, right? So you, it's very, it starts out very brave. But then he was told he was not able to take a picture with the soldiers due to a security issue. And he took back the food <laughs> and left. Go, well, you're not going to leave the bagels and falafel? He goes, no. 
If I don't get a photo, you don't get any bagels and falafel. <laughs> this is a fair deal. I'm offering all I want is one measly photo with the you know with the people fighting my enemies. Mm. So then he can take the photo and he can show it to his girlfriend, and she's like. I, I can't give you the money. And he goes, look at this. That's me on the front lines with the boys. <laughs> he just needs the photos and then he can cut his head out and superimpose it on one of the soldiers. <laughs> How's he not getting called up, by the way? Called up? To as to fight. Well, maybe he's not in the reserve. He probably spindled his way out of it. Think you're allowed, I don't think you'd just be like, oh, n no army for me. Like, I think if you're a certain age and you live in Israel, you're like, you're on the list. Is that what it happens? I believe so. Well, anyways, Brett Gelman's been brave. Oh, Brett Gelman's so fucking So brave. after you told me about it last week, I went and did a deep dive. You didn't, well, maybe you did mention, but it wasn't. I, meant, I didn't get into every single thing. So you mentioned it all. I just didn't process the amount that he's singing. So he every day he posts a video and he's singing, right? Because well, he's a theater fag. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he goes, like... he goes from the, but his new one, he goes, He's saying for the from the river to the sea that means that you want to kill me, but he goes from the river to the to sea. the sea that means that you want to kill me. He got his Jewish girlfriend. His goes, girlfriend. Oh, that means too. that you want to kill me from the river to the sea. That means that you want to kill me. He does something like that, and it's like. This is really crazy. Insane. And helping <laughs> nothing. Like, this is not helping anything. Because you're like, this is not getting sympathy for Jewish it's the people. Opposite. It's, it's not getting sympathy for Israel. All it is is people go, wow, celebrities are totally out of touch. Breck Elman and Jews are just like pieces of shit. Like, no good is coming of this. But he's lived such an insulated life that he literally cannot... Uh, he just can't understand it. He goes like, how could this be bad? Hey, you explained it to me, and I said, well, that sounds funny. It can't <laughs> possibly be as crazy as Danny was explaining it as. I started digging through these things. I'm a fucking loser. I'm a, I go, am I being pranked? Did Danny, did Danny start a Brett the Gelman channel and then face, <laughs> face swap himself on there to mess with me? There is literally only one explanation that makes any sense and that he is some sort of hamas manchurian candidate where like he's like on the hamas payroll they're like look dude <laughs> we're gonna give you more money than adult swim could ever give you in three fucking make us centuries make us look good in israel bad like he's like a I'll literal yeah, yeah insane, like he's a literal double agent that's the only thing that can make sense here i don't know what's going on <laughs> but it is wacky my friend so brave there yeah. black israelites black uh, israelites bravely fought for their motherland finally showing up for the Jews. Thank you. Finally. You've been talking about this for a while. You say, where are these black Israelites? No. We're I, in a battle right now. I mean, they, that's the thing. I was saying before this, it's the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend because they were uh, they were hating the Jews. But then the moment the Palestinians are like, no, this is our land. And the black Hebrew Israel is like, no, 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 no. This is not your land. And <laughs> no, it's no, not, no, 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 no. It's not your land. It's not their land either. It's our land. <laughs> and neither of you get it. Been and on I, both wrong situations. Yeah, but the problem is, is that all these rallies, it's like you know, a hundred to one Palestinian supporters to Israeli supporters. They don't have as much armor, though. No, but I think they see that in the Black Hebrew Israelis, and they go, "Okay, well, that's like we're not worried about the 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 fake Jews. We got to go after the Palestinians. They're uh -huh. they're they're actually like so they're like these guys are going to worry. Yeah, right, right, right. Oh, and if the Palestinians get a hold of Israel, if that becomes Palestine, we'll never get it back. That's it. That's the Black Hebrew Israelites. That's over for them. They they think they'll never They're get black back. Hebrew Palestinians or something. <laughs> that doesn't even have a good ring to it. <laughs> black Hebrew. Not even black Hebrew. It's like black Arab, black Arabic Palestinians. <laughs> they wouldn't like that. That the sound doesn't have the same ring to it. No. <laughs> so brave people all, all around there. Okay, here is. Bro, I'll tell you what real bravery is. Me hanging on to Bitcoin till now it's actually cooking again. Yeah, we are. That's bravery. But. Woman shares one simple step to stop bed rotting the day away and weekends after work, right? Uh huh. It's a very brave method. <laughs> There's a lot of brave SSRIs. Going on to it. Is it SSRIs? It's better than SSRIs. Mm. So she goes, she's figured out, she, you know, because a lot of girls, you know, the weekend hits and you uh, gobble it. You just want to fucking gobble them yeah, Just go gobble them just, just go gobble Just grab an entire apple pie. You know, just, just, just don't even grab a utensil, you know, maybe a plastic spoon. Nah, or maybe you grab your spork, your one spork. Just grab your spork. Just nestle into bed and just eat that whole thing like a fucking slob. You put on a clown costume and just fucking put a pie mm. in your own face and then eat the entire <laughs> pie and then eat the fucking pan too. Absolutely. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I just eat an entire box of cereal and I eat the box too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> just gobble. Got that mode. So that's what sometimes they're doing, right? Yep. But she's saying, we don't need to do that. 
well, there's some other things we could do. There's a way we can get out of goblin moaning. So this is what she, I'll tell you what her thing is. Mm. You know what? Why don't you just, why don't you just tell me which movie you want to see? <laughs> a TikToker known. You really have been watching a lot of Seinfeld. <laughs> That's a pretty obscure reference. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Told you I'm the Seinfeld quote guy now. <laughs> Why don't you just tell me which movie you want to see? <laughs> solid. Solid line. <laughs> solid line. So her name's Life's Raven on the ass. She has the perfect solution. It couldn't be more simple. Raven says, just simply say out loud the things you want to be doing instead of rotting in your bed. Right? But I'm just like, <laughs> the idea was killing me of this fucking girl sitting in her one-bedroom apartment, lying in her bed being like, I will take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to brush your teeth today. That's true bravery. You will stand up and you will put on a bra. No, I, I don't care what anyone says, Samantha. You are going to do this. You're going to brush your hair. Yes, I can. Yeah, it's a little Stuart Smalley. You ever do that? <laughs> Just kind of really amp myself up and be like, hey, you got to go do this. Uh, not for those mundane things. I will sure. spank it again. Don't <laughs> mind if I do. I don't care if it's raw and painful. <laughs> I will persevere. I will walk to the kitchen and make myself food. <laughs> Just giving yourself the orders is so funny. Oh, yeah. the but guy's one thing is giving your like in front of a mirror and you're bigging yourself. This is her just like laying in bed you're gonna fuck on her me. side, be like, "Hey, you're taking a shower. You're gonna you? do it. Just get up. Come on." <laughs> You're gonna fucking get up, you know. You can one arm at a time get that fucking like. There you go. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Stand up now. Stand up. Stand up. Yes, 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 yes. Oh shit! Walk to the bathroom. You're only four steps away. You are fucking doing it. You're Rocky. You're fucking Rocky. That's like a if someone was trying to like rehabilitate themselves after like a bad car accident, you know, and they're like, that's what she's doing. Take that step. You can do it. And you're like training yourself to walk again. No longer will I sit in my bed like a goblin i samantha anderson will wake up and have myself a cup of orange juice <laughs> and then you just hear a banging on the wall shut the fuck up <laughs> just get up and do something if she has roommates yeah. she's like shut the fuck up i will hang that picture that has been sitting in my living room for nine months well i guess the question is did it work mm. She says the technique's been fucking cooking, man. Yeah. She's been able to do she everything she, she wanted to. She wrote this to. blog. Yeah. Number one on the list. Write, uh, a blog, write, a blog. write a blog post about my bullshit. Well, that's what she said. She did basically was sitting there in the bed one time, and she was like, you will have a shower today. And then she gets up and has a shower, and she goes, holy fuck. She goes, it worked. <laughs> it worked. I just cracked life. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe she's gonna, maybe we're laughing and she's the next like she's like the forty eighth president of the United States, and then she's gonna be like it's because I, I was just bigging myself up. I think she was aiming. Yeah, this she's, is like she's gonna start David, aiming. It's so a funny. Like David Goggins is like this is basically this is girl like, David Goggins. Girl David Goggins. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I will Goggins. run till my feet bleed, and theirs is just like, <laughs> you know what? I will get that tissue and stop using my bed cushion <laughs> as a <laughs> wiping mechanism. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 no, no negative talk either. It's not like the Goggins, like, you fucking bitch. Like, it's just as it goes, <laughs> just, you can just do this shower. You can get there. Another brave one. This is probably the big, most brave of all of them. So there's a lot of bravery this yeah. year, right? Fitness influencer Sophie Guidion. I, I don't know how to say her name, but she yeah. comes out of the closet, and we all know coming out of the closet is pretty hard. Oh, you know? so different. You've come out of the closet many as a, times as a fat, as a Jew. Yeah, oh, lots of things. She's come out of the closet as a stutterer. This is the this is the final culmination of everyone needing a thing. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, you don't really need to come into the closet because like it's I can tell. But she goes, she's she she basically stood up and she made a big post and she was like, the, my favorite one's always the people coming into the closet as a fucking crazy. I mean, the best the saddest is, is that it's a written post, obviously, because like there's just some idea of funny. Ah. Like, you go, hey everybody, I. S Stutter. You may yeah, not. Okay. Everybody, <laughs> I have a confession to make. You m m m m might not know this about me, <laughs> but for years I've been s s suffering in s s silence. <laughs> you know, we kind of do though. It's cool. And it is time that I've c c c come c c c come in like a nightmare. Yeah. What up? Three eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking around, and what you got to show for it? 
<laughs> Those lyrics are so funny. Let it be known that I'm in the zone. <laughs> Let it be known that I'm in the zone is not a good <laughs> rap lyric. I'm in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be known that I'm in the zone is not a good rap lyric. And I'm through with it. I'm new with it. Anyways, more of that kind of stuff. That yeah, was some big 311. 311's fucking sick. <laughs> they had one song I liked. I can't remember. You would probably like Amber. That seems up your alley to fucking like the remember. one crappy slow song. That's really definitely 100% the one you liked. Maybe. That's a Danny fucking. That's a Danny jam. Doesn't ring a bell, Danny honest, jam. But. Yeah, it would ring a bell. I am coming out of the closet. <laughs> so she comes out of the closet. Yeah, has stutter. She says that she often speaks with a stutter when she gets nervous. So she's not all the time. Once in blue moon, when she's nervous, yeah. she speaks with a stutter. She's just basically like a guy on like uh, asking a girl out. A little For bit the like first that. Time like a, just a kind of like. W w would you go to the, d the dance? <laughs> yeah. Me? When there's a spooky situation, would, would, would you make make me the happiest man in the <laughs> school and go to d dance with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coming out of the closet of stuttering's fucking next level, dude. Um, she said sometimes she wouldn't leave the house, and she had an eye twitch that sometimes make her a target of cruel trolls. So the eye twitch, you'd also don't have to come out of the closet for because they'll see, right? Yeah. But that's why every they always did the thing where girls would come out of the closet, or when they did the Bell Let's Talk Day, and girls would go. You know what? Some people may not know this about. It wasn't just girls. It was some of our crazy comedian friends. They mm -hmm. go. A lot of people may not know this about me, but I have suffered from various mental illness bouts. And everyone's like, "Yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> you're the fucking dude. You wear your fucking shoes on the wrong feet. Yeah. You're nuts." <laughs> you go. Uh, we know. Yeah. Oh, do ya? <laughs> do, 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 do ya? <laughs> I, <laughs> some of you may not know this, but there has been times in my life where my mental illness has not been shooting a hundred. <laughs> and we go, <laughs> we go, yeah, I fucking watch you flip out on a waiter yeah. because they brought you the fucking wrong glass of water. <laughs> There's a comic in Toronto. I don't remember exactly who it is. I have it narrowed down to one of two people, but uh, apparently he was like at some sh like an open mic a while ago, and then he was complaining that his feet were like sore. Mm -hmm. and someone looked down, and his feet were on the his shoes were on the wrong feet. I know who it is. Uh, and I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he goes, "Are your shoes on the wrong feet?" <laughs> It's so funny that you're walking. That's like, just the ultimate crazy guy. Yeah, dude. you're like, how could you walk? How long could you? Like, you probably took. You've been out of the house for a few hours. At Having that the point. shoes on your own feet is so fucking nuts. You know, instantly something feels wrong, and then it feels wrong twice because it feels wrong for both feet. It's not like you put two lefts on and you go, oh shit! Like you got to be a real fucking nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And then yeah, that's that's the type of person that would be like, you may not realize this, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And you go, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you just buzz cutted your hair out of nowhere, Britney style. Yeah. I, mean, bro, I would assume that you're a little crazy. <laughs> uh -huh. Did you see the teen that uh, is in trouble because he was sucker punching people? Uh, I did, yeah. So this guy is like, anyhow, he's doing a press tour, kind of being, uh, I'm sorry, it was a mistake or whatever. Yeah. And I, I, I just don't it's know. Crazy. Be like, people didn't see that we shook hands at the end. And I, I mean, the guy would do it. He probably would shake your hand because he's like, what the fuck are you up to next? Yeah, but he's also like, and you didn't see where I helped them up. And you go, oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> You, like I mean literally you can kill someone like that like that should be like attempted murder I've said it before that old you know I'm an old-fashioned prank guy but more importantly than that it's just like everyone if you're not a particularly funny person you don't have to be a it's a, well then how are they supposed to get some clout well this is the problem I mean listen I don't know how it's solved but the, the root of the problem is not bad people punching people, or the root of the problem is not psychopaths coming out of the closet. A lot of the root of the problem is these people think they need to be famous, and they yeah. go, they go, hey, what are you, it's like, oh my God. It's like you're almost 18, and you haven't even tried to like be famous yet. You go, well, what is your skills? You go, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is your ticket. He goes, he goes, but 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 I don't have anything. He goes, say that again. He goes, but 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 I don't have any skills. He goes, Samantha, that's the fucking skill. Yeah, that's the thing. You're sitting on a fucking gold mine right now, and you don't even know about it. You're gonna be a Duh. You're gonna be a st st star, kid. <laughs> Wait a second. Like when they move the hair out of their face, they yeah. go, "You're beautiful." He goes, "See that voice again?" What? 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 What voice? And you go, "Jesus fucking Christ, we're on a fucking gold mine right <laughs> Get now." Get me the head of Universal Records right now. Yeah, and then there's another guy. He's like him and his boys. He's like, "I'm in, man. I wish I was a famous prankster." And then they get into a scuffle at the bar, and some you know guy pushes him and he punches him, and he goes, "James." 
What, you, what was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah, did you make his head hit that pool table on purpose? Or <laughs> is that <laughs> planned? Did, dude, is that like a thing you do? Or is that... <laughs> and he goes... Well, I don't know. I just have this. I, fist. I just have this anger inside of me that makes me want to just punch people who I've <laughs> never met. Have you ever Have you ever tried filming that? I'm, 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 <laughs> he goes, I don't know. I mainly just I mainly just punch people in my own privacy, in my own home. I don't know if I want to yeah. do it in front of everyone and put it all on camera like a singer of yeah, the yeah. American Idol person. Yeah, yeah, He's just in punching the in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought? About punching people in public. He goes, I, I'm not that guy. Listen, yeah. I'm, I, if I want to get drunk at a bar and punch people, sometimes even at school I used to punch people, but on camera, I don't... I don't he's all coy. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Because, I mean, surely there's no money in that. They go, I got something to tell you. I got something to fucking show you right now. There is money to be made in punching <laughs> strangers. That's like his his, his uh, like photo ops and stuff is people go meet like the punching guy and then he punches you out for like, that's like the higher tier. It's like 40 for a photo, 80 to punch you out. <laughs> you meet up with him in the meet and greet he punches you out. <laughs> I brought my uh, brought my son. He's a big fan of yours. He would like nothing more than just for you to uh, knock him unconscious. We didn't grow up in this era, but the like era where you gotta hey, bu you gotta try to be famous. Like you're not you're not a scientist. When you I was be a, kid, a science influencer. You played the knockout game because you wanted to do a hate crime, not because you <laughs> wanted to be famous. You played the knock up game. Kids these days. Kids these days. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's what could possibly good coming out of this for him to be doing this press tour well like, this doesn't obviously, really, obviously this is a, a criminal matter well i think he worked he's like famous now i think he's worked he's uh, getting all these like literally knockout and he's on a press tour and they're like yeah the press tour is you everyone hates you and you're like <laughs> i got news for you they hated me before <laughs> like the, when people follow the knockout channel didn't think i was the fucking right right, right. he goes i'm top guy I, I was hated before so i think he's getting exactly what he wanted is da what's going on dana white's gonna sign him for his new knockout league <laughs> Now everybody knows that working out has many positives. You're sleeping better, you're looking better, you're feeling better. However, it can be hard to keep that groove going. And that's why with FitBod, they keep it interesting. If you're out of town, you plug in what they got in the gym, they give you all the exercises you need. They can keep track of your progress and allows you to switch things up and keep it interesting so you're not just getting in the same rut over and over again. Hitting plateaus and whatnot. Hitting plateaus. That's what, yeah. I mean, I use it at literally four or five times a week. It's it's honestly like I've been keeping at it. It's, it's, Me as uh, well. Yeah, it's the shit. It's such a good app. Yes, definitely a great app. They got custom workouts based on your goals, your experience, available equipment, and more. You can build the fitness habits and stay consistent. Intelligently varies your intensity and volume and tracks the muscle fatigue and recovery to design a well-balanced workout plan. Now, this is a better deal than getting a personal trainer. I can oh. tell you that much right there. It's like a personal trainer, but well, that's the deal. In your pocket. It's never been easier to get the results you've wanted. So check out FitBod and you get 25% off your subscription at fitbod.me slash boyscast. That is F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash boyscast. And now I got to tell you again about Salty Sailor Coffee. Now me and Danny both been indulging mm -hmm. in the smooth stylings Fair of nice. the Salty oh, yeah. Sailor Coffee. Absolutely. It comes in a badass box. Oh yeah, it's like a bullet tin. It's a no nothing wrong with the box. It's yeah. a, I'll tell you what, I'm sure people are be like, people. it's not called a bullet tin. <laughs> yeah, it's not called a bullet tin. It has a proper sure. name. <laughs> it's a unique name, unique flavor. Ammo so, box. So di Ammo box. So dive into the world of Salty Sailor Coffee. This is not just just a coffee brand. This is an experience, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. Show them the bullets. We got the bullets. Yeah, yeah, there's the bullets. Yeah, the little, yeah, the little bullets to keep your uh, to keep your alcohol. There going. we go. Yeah, these are like little fro. You put them in, these in the freezer, and then you put them in whiskey, and then your whiskey doesn't get all watery. Yeah, these are cool as shit. Dude. Hell yeah, dude. This is single origin, organic selections that ensure top-notch quality, meticulous sourcing process, only the finest beans make the cut. And the mission is simple, drink coffee and do good. Salty Sailor Coffee prioritizes their crew, customers, and supporters, proudly giving back 10% of every sale goes to the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society to support active duty sailors and Marines needing a helping hand. And despite being a boutique brand with a 10% charity commitment, they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe on pricing with any leading veteran-owned premium coffee vendors, whether that be Black Rifle or Blackout Coffee, so you can experience premium coffee without the premium price tag, all right? So head over to the website, discover a 
treasure trove of flavors, not to mention they got gear, mugs, shirts, hats, and the original box is very cool in and of itself with lots of cool stuff. Special promo for the Boys Cast listeners is Boys Cast 15. Pop that in there for the discount. Dana White, another brave guy, partnering with Bud Light. Yeah. That is brave. What Bud he- Light must have really opened up the pocketbooks for that one. Because you know their first thing was they're like, hey, uh, we'd like to sponsor UFC and Dana White's like, come on. The fuck out of here. Yeah, like, come on. What are you talking about? And they go, we're like, no, no, we, we're, we know what's going on here. Like, we have, like, Modelo or whatever. He goes, no, go. you don't understand. We're not gay anymore. Do you think, the, <laughs> <laughs> do you think Bud Light, the, the head of Bud Light, yeah, Bud Light goes, and say, no, this queer stuff's over, okay? No, I promise. No, yes. Danny, he does the, I'm not gay no oh, yeah. more. <laughs> I like women. Wilma, 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 Wilma. Has someone made that meme yet? If that's Bud Light talking no, to you, no, no, selling, like pitching so. themselves to you, saying, no. I'm not gay no more i like dana white goes listen you're a gay brand okay just accept that you're a gay brand he goes i like women <laughs> women, 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 women. dude they must have given so much money that must have cost they must have dropped the motherfucking bag whatever it cost uh bud light to sponsor ufc a year ago mm-hmm. it must have cost twice that they weren't messing around no no no, so I think they came in and then he goes, listen, we're not gay no more. And then he goes, they're like, well, we can get these homos out of the office. And then someone goes, stop, stop, stop. How not gay we talking? <laughs> and then he goes, we're talking really fucking not gay, dude. Real straight bread. Real straight bread. <clears throat> Yeah. I, one thing I, I thought it was funny is Fox News did an article about it. They go, uh, they're kind of like, are are they ready for our apology? Or like, are, are, is there a redemption arc for Bud Light? And then they said, there's two options. Either Bud Light is really trying to turn over a new leaf and win back its customers, or it's just trying to make pretend and make this all go away. And you're just like, yeah, it's that one, obviously. But like, you go, the idea of going to like a brand and treating them like a person, you go, but do they mean it? <laughs> I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're were the biggest beer in company. America and they're trying to like, what? They're not quitting beer business. They yeah. got to figure something out. Even it's so funny to talk to them like, like it's your, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's your friend that like, stole from you and you're just like, I don't know if he means it or not. You're like, yeah, the. Treat it. They're companies. Yeah. <laughs> they're one hundred percent in a boardroom, being like, "It's so crazy. It might just work." Like UFC. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, what else are they gonna do? Well, Strong <clears throat> Strickland's coming out, being like, "You know what? I'm." He goes. He was like, "I'm just happy that Bud Light's finally agreed that like trans people, it's like they're a no go." <laughs> and he, they're going. He's going hard on. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. sort of now they. Uh, there, uh, we'll see how it plays out. But Sean Strickland posted my uh, video uh, yesterday too, so hopefully he comes on the podcast. That'd oh, be that'd be sick. sick. He's sick. Yeah, yeah. Do well, you think he should after his next fight if he wins and Bud Light's like in the middle of the ring, he just goes and shits on the can? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think he comes in and basically, uh, he he basically. What would be the least gay thing you could do? So with like the, the not can? listening to. <clears throat> You speak. <laughs> What's the least gay thing you could do? I don't know. <laughs> like, how do they go really not have gay? Sex with a woman, I guess. Yeah, having sex with a woman's kind of gay though. Fucking, sometimes, maybe fuck up all the. If you fucking, if you do it on uh, Saturday when you're supposed to be hanging out with the boys and you're hanging having sex with a woman, it can be a little gay at times. Yeah, he should just shit on it. Getting married and then having sex on your wedding night can also be. <laughs> That's good. It's a fucking homo business. You might be a gay. <laughs> yeah. So it could be that, but I think yeah, I think that they're gonna go str- like hardcore, not gay. Yeah, All right. I think they come out to uh, like the, the question the, is does the it work? Lonely Island Macklemore parody where it's like I, I not mean, gay, not yeah, not, yeah. not 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 gay. <laughs> right, right. I mean, if if Bud Light manages to c- correct this ship and, and somehow manages to find themselves back on the top of the uh, light beer heap. That would be pretty impressive. That would be a big... Because you remember, everybody was like, this is going to be a case study in business school for like the next like 50 years kind of mm-hmm. thing. If they also correct it, there'll be like two case studies. That would be a, a funny case study because it's so political. And if you're just like a normal chick in marketing and they're just like, how to shed the like hate that you're getting for like, yeah. your aunt, for your like being too gay. Yeah, and like, like oh. why, the, why they did it right. Yeah. <laughs> like if it works. <laughs> and they, <laughs> and they and course corrected from getting too gay. Yeah, exactly. That's hilarious. <laughs> but um, the bravery is not over. It's almost over. I have a few more bravery things. Iceland's first 
A uh, full day women's strike in 48 years aims to close the pay gap. Mm-hmm. So the whole every single woman's going on strike, including the president. That's the best part of Iceland. Tens of thousands of women and non-binary people across. Uh, they're non-binary people getting in on it, are, are they? Yeah, yeah. Including the prime minister are expected That's to stop right. work. So this is the funniest image ever of everyone being like. This thing's out of control. We need to. We're, we're all uh, we're all striking, and then they all kind of like run out. All the women are striking. The president being like, "Me too." That's the equivalent of like the police chief taking the day off for like the, yeah, the yeah, to for, riot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also like you're the prime minister. Like, was there? Would you be making more money if you were a man prime minister? Like, did they have a higher rate? And they go, "Oh, well, you know, you're the first female prime minister, so of course we're going to pay you less money mm-hmm. uh, because you know we have a different rate for the if you were a man or a woman." Like, she makes the same. This is crazy. <laughs> the also, it's like you really you just have a full day to just do nothing, huh? <laughs> As the prime. I mean, it is Iceland. I don't know how many people live in Iceland. Probably. Some might call that a day off. I mean, obviously, this point has been made, but probably not helping your whole wage gap situation. You guys uh, taking the days off. You go, <laughs> well, that's one three hundred sixty fifth less money that you're probably going to make that day, unless you have a jo- salary job. Oh yeah. I don't think anybody who's who's earning like a day daily rate kind of thing will be doing that. Well, she has a salaried position. It's all, that's all. Yeah, exactly. It'll be all people who are just working for the government or whatnot. <laughs> I'm loving that though. You know what the thing is? <clears throat> uh, you know what? I'm going to talk about that in one second. Okay. Also, that also I will say that Tyson Fury fight was. Uh, uh, super pretty good, f- yeah, yeah, sick. pretty good for uh, that. considering how bad most of these. Fights and it are reminded me how crappy the fucking Paul brothers fights are because we got conned into watching them, and that was Terrible. so boring. And then brutal. watching a real fight so much better. They've all been so brutal. Um, there's one brave men thing too that men have done brave. Uh, business guru blasted for pulling kids from school because teacher was 200 pounds, so he walked into the school. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes. Who the fuck is this? You got this. You got this butter. Yeah, he bean? went for a PTA meeting. Like, Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, I actually, to a degree, like the case he makes for you go like case doesn't make that. It's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. He goes like, yeah, this is the person who like my kid spends probably more time with than me, or like as much time with me. So he's like, I just want them to be this person to kind of like just. Uh, pass on good uh, that was his good traits kind of thing. He goes, eh, but he's under fire for admitting he pulled his children out of school after learning the teacher was 200 pounds overweight. That is true. It is hard to learn from someone. Again, this is, I think, high school, but you go, it is hard to learn from someone when uh, it's very... If someone's two hundred pounds overweight, right? Yeah. That's that's a big boy, right? So we're sitting here at like. Although it is, I believe a woman. That's the thing is, like, I think it was a woman. Teacher. We got a four hundred pound woman. Yeah. So she's teaching your kids habits, and yeah. this guy says, "Nah, dog." I mean, th- she's probably not a private school teacher, though. If you want the top notch teachers, I guess you just don't go to public school. I though. mean, there might be a private school. I don't think that precludes you from being like a uh, fourth grade English teacher. Well, the funny part is he got in her face. I looked at her and he said, "No, you're low energy. Low energy. <laughs> you're depressed. You're spending more time with my kid than I am, and I'm concerned about the amount of influence you're exerting." Because what you're teaching is not what's in the book. It's how you're living your life, and you're not an inspirational human being. Yeah. Well, she's a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> a, you know, I don't know who, yeah, you, yeah. who you're expecting. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's I don't tell. Like, I I understand where he's coming from. I don't tell. Like, yeah, I don't know if you need. I, I'm trying to think of any teacher. How many companies middle, have you started? Yeah, in middle school, like how many teachers of mine inspired me one way or another? I'm gonna go with zero. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember ever being inspired by a teacher. No, I can't really think of one either. No, not like I, I had ones I liked more Inspired than others. Inspired to skip class. Yeah, I mean, I goes. I, I guess it's cool that you guys have the summer off. You're like I could be a teacher. Yeah, I go. That's cool, but I, I don't know about inspiration. Is farting a class that can be taught? <laughs> Shout out to Matthew Perry. We should probably say, by the way. Yeah, Canadian legend. I didn't know he was Canadian. He's from Ottawa. Really? Yeah. His, Interesting. Uh, yeah. I actually didn't know that. They left that out of the articles I read. Dude, so his photos of him. Do you think that was on purpose? That what? They like left that out of the articles. Uh, I mean, he's kind of. It's not an an important part of him, but yeah. Give a shout out to some. Chandler Dude, don't jokes. you know that he he went to school with Justin Trudeau and used to. Bully, I remember that story. And used to bu- bully Justin Trudeau. He said he bullied him. Yeah. Well, the, he's obviously that's that cool. Was, that was in Canada. Okay. Yeah. He said he beat him up or something. Yeah. Did Trudeau ever respond to that? Uh, Trudeau, when he died, tweeted something about how he's like uh, his. Buddy or something, Matthew Perry. I think went to school together. I don't know. And then he was like, "You're not my buddy." Yeah, <laughs> Matthew Perry came back from the dead to be like, "You're not my buddy, guy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
The fifth dentist caved. Now they're all recommending Trident. That was a good joke. <laughs> I'm glad we're having a rehearsal dinner. I rarely pack practice meals before I eat. Sure. King of sarcasm. <clears throat> you have to stop the Q-tips when there's resistance. <laughs> so those are three of them. Kevin, Pro Kevin Brennan really. Uh, I'm not the biggest. Uh, I'm not the biggest Friends fan, but I did like when uh, he was getting uh, suited up for the pants, and then Ross says that his. Uh, he says he keeps getting uh, basically molested. He's, he's he's touching his junk, and he goes, "Everyone touches. They always touch your junk." And he goes, "Yeah, no, that's normal." In jail, I think. <laughs> yeah, Might have been Ross. I can't remember, but that was a good friend's joke. I, yeah, I definitely. That's the thing. Seinfeld, even though I haven't watched Seinfeld in a long time, can still remember tons of the lines. I don't think really. Uh, everyone that kept it goes, could he be any? Like that was Chandler's one. What is it? He goes, is like, I don't know. He would be like, can you be any more? Like whatever. Oh, like, yeah. That was, and then that was every tweet. He was basically like the Olsen Everybody's twins. Like, could he be any more dead? Yeah, that's that was, true. He invented sarcasm, I guess, yeah. for in the sitcom era. He was the king of it. Uh, and then, so I've got a little story about him. That's one of the reasons, too. Oh, okay. So I know a chick that went on a date with him, and she met him on Raya, right? Oh, right. And the weird part about this is, so he was sober, so they go for dinner, and his handlers, who were like his making sure he's still sober people, they come on the dinner. Oh. So basically just went to the restaurant, He's got these two, like, keeping him sober guys. They sit at, like, the table before, like, their secret service. Yeah. Make sure he doesn't drink. Yeah. That's such a bummer that he died. Because he could have just been boozing this whole time. Why, right, because why not? I, like, actually think about it, and I go, that sucks. Yeah, I missed out you, on yeah, that Yeah, fun. you go, you had, like, yes, it was self-destructive, but that's only if you lived a long life. Uh-huh. You kind of missed out on all this fun. Well, some he could have just been doing fucking coke. And well, some people are speculating that he was doing some stuff, but I don't know if people, some people say. I mean, did. obviously, it puts uh, a toll on the heart. Probably living that hard puts a toll on the heart, but also, like, super healthy people just, their heart, your heart gives out. Yeah. Just and like, then you're right. Kevin Brennan made a joke about it, and he's been getting written every, like, literally every articles every about it. Every he keeps news. SNL alumni. It's, it's interesting. They always try to, like, t so basically, he, he made a joke about it, and he said, like, I think he said, like, he just ah. said, ha 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 ha. Matthew Perry died. Like, yeah, something like, like that. Really but then they wrote a thousand articles being, like, ex SNL alumni, because they've got to, like, tie it to some yeah, institution. Yeah, to some big, something big as much. Yeah, to, like, more gravity is. It's like he wrote know. for there a couple of seasons, like, Two seasons. 20 yeah. years ago or 30 years ago or whatever. Yeah. But they have to try to tie it to... And then they were trying to tie it to Sarah Silverman because he dated her 20 years ago. Yeah, and it was just like... her virginity. It's kind of like a Weasley move that they do. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Oh, Ryan's learning that the fucking mainstream <laughs> media is a bunch of weasels. <laughs> well, I mean, they have to because if they go Kevin Brennan, people are like, who? No offense, Kevin. I love you. But, uh, you know, and then but they have to be like X SNL and people go, oh. How dare someone of my beloved Saturday Night Live right. would be smirch Matthew Perry? Yeah, because I guess they're trying to goat SNL into like commenting. Yeah, on exactly. It. And then Lauren Michaels was like, oh, I don't know. I was going to try and do a Lauren Michaels impression, but then I. They're trying to Ari Shafir him, is what they're trying to do. They're sure. trying to turn this into like a real deal. The thing. problem, though, I don't know if the Kobe fans are. I don't think that Chandler's got the same fucking nah, fans. No, no, they're not. They're no no uh, Chandler fans are showing up with guns outside of Kevin Brennan's house. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but he loves it. He loves it more than Ari did. Yeah, he, he likes loves it. it. He retweets every article. <laughs> um, okay, so the celebrities' wives have been out of control. Jada Pinkett Smith has been, you know, probably top notch of yeah. the. She's the top of the top. Mm -hmm. And then Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are like really out there yeah. uh, in the news. Everything I saw Ben Affleck doing an interview where he, he was kind of like. On its face, it sort of makes sense where he goes, I hate that I'm in the news so much. I wish they would just leave me alone. He goes, I just want to do my job and be an actor and live my life. And it was like, okay. That is part of your job. Yeah, but like, first of all, you don't date like one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. So it's like, you say that, but none of your actions really uh, sure. say that. The people, there are lots of actors. They, you don't hear much from them. You don't see much from them. That's 100% a choice. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, there are actors that are very famous, and you go, I see him in movies and at award shows. Like, what's John C. Riley's life like? You don't really know, do you? No. So you kind of do get to choose. Mm -hmm. Correct. So it's a little bit, you know, he goes on uh, talk shows and says his opinion and all that sort of stuff. It's like you're out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you're kind and of you like probably lying. choose to live in like you know L.A. and you go out to certain things and you're like you can definitely stay under the radar. 
He's in the mix. Yeah, yeah, it's by choice. This man's doing. You go to you go to like oh, I happen to be at the restaurant that like all the paparazzi hang out front of because that's the restaurant celebrities go to, and you go, come on guys, can oh, I not just on. have can one walk- meal yeah. in peace? And you go, okay. Can I can I live my life? Yeah, and you're like shut up. And you go, you're you you're at the paparazzi's nest. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you know what you're doing, man. So there's that, but. Jennifer Lopez, uh, uh, it came out like basically she's been going on, uh, she's been saying this different places and then exes sort of said this too, but she has nine rules that she makes her husband and boyfriends follow. So I got a couple of the rules. You tell me if you'd be okay with these rules. Red flag. Uh, Rules are red flag. Nine written rules. One rule is one rule red is, flag. Yeah, one rule you go like, depending on the rule, you go like, okay. No, no rules. I Dude, know. I don't know if you know how I live my life. Yeah, I've seen your shirt. I go, no fear, yep. no fat chicks, <laughs> no rules. I have that tattooed on my back, and I drive my Harley down the freeway, yep. and on my leather jacket, I've cut out a bit of the leather jacket so you can see, you can see the tattoo. no fear. No fat chicks, Mm -hmm. no rules, no speed limits, (laughs) (laughs) no days off. That's a fourth rule, technically. I have five, actually. I've added two more, Mm -hmm. which is no speed limits and no days off. Okay, that's fine. Five, Five rules. And then my sixth rule... Is keep them cold. <laughs> rule seven is C rules one through six. <laughs> no Bud Light. <laughs> Getting t- Lopez territory here. That's what I say. That's what I first do on, when I first start dating someone. I go, we should do a little ground rules here. You got I'm just if you have anything that you want to air out, and you go, and I'd like a few, tell you how I feel right now. So before we take this union any further, I should you should know rule one. No rules. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number two: Keep them cool. Yeah, <laughs> keep them cool. <laughs> They're in this order, by the way. Rule number three: No speed limits. Mm. So I, I yeah. this is the kind of conversations yeah, that I have. <clears throat> so her rule. No female flight attendants. That's the first rule. Yeah. Apparently, there's some hanky panky with an ex. Yeah. When he was Mar- on a Mark private jet. Mark Anthony smashed one of the flight attendants. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So she goes. The worst ba- is when you got to pay for the sins of the last guy. Well, that's, that's like to paying for the sins of the last guy. Some bullshit. That is some bullshit. Well, that's Shit. my first rule: is I don't pay for the sins of the last. <laughs> that guy. That is a good first rule. I ain't paying for no sins of yeah. another man that's not me. Do I look like a porter? Because I ain't carrying this fucking baggage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's two things you should know about me <laughs> rule one do i look like a porter you go it's more of a question than a rule that's my do uh, i that's my i should have told you that's my eighth rule <laughs> no carry only carry on <laughs> no sorry check your baggage check your baggage yeah. check your baggage at the fucking door because this is a carry on only and we don't want to be bringing much on this plane yeah and there's going to be female flight attendants now and they're gonna the be question fucking is, mint do you refer to yourself as ryanair Interesting. Yeah, just because that's taken. Uh, that's one of my rules that I don't. <laughs> that's one of my rules that I'll never do that. <laughs> rule number seven. Don't be calling me Ryan Air, okay? <laughs> I think we're like in the teens. I got all the few rules. Yeah, yeah. No gay shit. No gay shit. So he's apparently Ben Affleck, which is funnier because Ben Affleck's so grumpy as is that he's got to go on the flight and then he's got to go up to the girls and be like, uh, listen, ladies, you got to hit the bricks. I got to bring on these two homos. That- <laughs> <laughs> he goes great I mean I guess she provides her own steward that's what she says she goes she brings her own male flight attendant who's not a flight attendant but a personal assistant which I assume if it's a private plane I guess you don't need a trained flight do attendant. the speech <laughs> um yeah you know. uh, the, the the doors are yeah they love their speeches man the, those flight attendants you ever have a sassy one that thinks they're killing ah, the worst the routine I think a lot of them have just replaced them with a video, though. James Kennedy had a funny, uh, funny routine where he, a funny bit that he used to say about the routine, and he used to say, "The worst part is when you see this uh, lady come up here and just bomb for twenty minutes with her crappy airline <laughs> jokes, and then after bombing for twenty minutes, you see her do it again in French." <laughs> French yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so she goes. That's her first rule. Number three, um, I just picked a couple of good ones. She demands access to A Rod's phone at all time. That so, was when she was with you. Yeah. I mean, A Rod's probably got ninety phones. He's like, oh no, you got access to my one phone that I only use for calling takeout. Mm, yeah, I don't know. He even said he didn't do anything. 
that was there was no like he thing. says he's innocent yeah he's like i never even i think there was just like apparently some chick he, he said like, the girl is not my lover not even it was like some chick was like era dm'd me or something but she's like i never met him or anything and then but the problem is is i guess he dm'd her and then she's like oh gotta go to tmz era dm'd me oh, okay yeah and then i guess and then so jlo is like new rule New, new rule. <laughs> like it's soon gonna be like you don't even get to have a phone. Whoever the guy is after, uh, what's his face? Whoever Ben Affleck will be like no phones. I can see Ben Affleck going on the snake phone, but I can also see A Rod having ninety different phones. I can see A Rod when she's gone. He basically he hits a button and then like a whole reception system comes down with screens oh, and yeah. he just got girls' numbers. He's flying the man. A Rod's a notoriously weird guy. A Rod had a giant. There's like a really famous story, but when he was like at the top, like because he was the first guy to sign the the two hundred the most lonely the two hundred and fifty million dollar contract in baseball or whatever, and uh, he had apparently in his penthouse was like you come in and it was like a giant mural. I'll tell you what it was him as a centaur. It wasn't a pent up house because that <laughs> no. man was laying oh, pipe. Oh, he was, but it was a giant having a giant minotaur thing is yeah, hilarious. Centaur, uh, and if, if you're being funny, it's kind of funny. Whatever, what's the horse one? Centaur? Mm, I don't know. Centaur? Yeah, yeah centaur. minotaur. Centaur. Yeah, yeah. Minotaur is like I think with the. So no, that's no. number three is A-Rod's got to have her phone at all times. Number four, no more than three drinks per night. That's a crazy rule. During Lopez's relationship with Rodriguez, the singer insisted a three-limit drink for A-Rod when he was out of town. So he goes, that's Oh, when, not- he's, when she's just, when he's not around. Yeah, I'm sure that rule gets followed a lot. If a girl tried to give me a three-drink limit, man... <laughs> Dude, she probably gives him like one of those things where it's like a breathalyzer on his keychain. She goes, take the breathalyzer. Yeah, and it's going to report back to me. Send me, I want the deets. Three drink limit is a little wild, J-Lo. Or, but you do, but then you kind of get around that. You go, you didn't say, you just get the giant boot of vodka. You you didn't say what drink. Yeah, well, you said your first rule is that you said I can only have three drinks tonight, but I don't know if you heard my keep them cold rule. Yeah, <laughs> keep them cold rule. That's a, you know what? You keep a six... You, I'm keeping a case cold. I yeah. hope you know that. You only drink yards. <laughs> so that's a crazy rule for th- three per night. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, she, I mean... Okay. If you... Okay, if, if, if I didn't know anything about jennifer lopez's rules and you said is she a nightmare to be with i would have been like yeah for sure well that's what i'm saying the celebrities wives are like real out of control yeah, and it starts giving normal chicks ideas but like I could well i guess the thing is she I is, she is, is j-lo I she's not just some celebrities wife hey, well if you want to keep it to yourself is she more famous than ben affleck yes yeah so if anything he's the wife similar though yeah he was batman they're both big deals J-Lo's partner must get along with Mark Anthony. So how about that? The baggage is, and you are now friends. Not only are you fucking checking baggage, you are getting a job at the airport being the baggage handler. Yeah. And you and the bag, you and the baggage got to be going to the, the park together and you, you and the baggage are going to go to A-Rod's game. Yeah, like she literally makes you like do stuff. It's not even like, hey, like we're in a group chat together. Just be nice. She's sitting you up on a play date with fucking Mark Anthony. <laughs> Mark Anthony's like wrote a script and you have to like let him pitch it to you and work on it. <laughs> He <laughs> wrote Good Will Hunting. I thought he goes, no, Matt Damon wrote Good Will Hunting. I was Mark has his script around. for you. Anthony and Lopez were married in 2004, so she's on very close. And some say they continue to be best of friends. Oh. Best have, of friends. I think friends. they have kids together. Best of friends. Oh, that's weird. If you want to be in on good terms is what you want to hear. Yeah. You go, we're on good terms, not best of friends. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It is weird. For J-Lo sure. can get away with it. Maybe the, kid, maybe the kids the thing is when you have like the separate families, maybe you're like, I'd like to do vacations with kind of everybody. So well, here's their last one. Lopez's partners aren't allowed to over tip their servers. That's. And there was an incident. She was at a casino. Affleck won a bunch of money, did a $10,000 tip. And Lopez showed up and said, oh, hell no. Nah, you can't. And took it away. You can't take a tip. She that's, did and could. That's crazy. If I was a server, I'd be like, no. Yeah, really. Money, be money. Like, Fuck that. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm not giving it back to you. Although she probably comes in hot, takes off those big hoop earrings. How about no, Jen? How about no? Kind of crazy. Yeah, she took off the yeah. hoop earrings and be like, "We mental. fucking you fight me for it, bitch." Like a mental case. And then this NBA guy has a famous wife. Mm. All these NBA guys, they date like porn stars and stuff like that, and then it's always kind of like a nightmare. Yeah, former first overall draft pick, I believe, in the 1995 NBA draft. Just this guy made like 60 mil in his career, right? So yeah, but he was a fuck up. He was what? He, he blew it. He lost it all. How did he blow? Lost it all. 
just it was like the NBA used to not have like now the NBA they they bring in like if you're a rookie your first week of orientation to the NBA there's like a financial planner they literally bring in this guy like or a guy like him to be like hey I made sixty million dollars you I guys don't, don't got to make the same mistakes literally, that I did no they do that now they bring in but they never had that before they like he's like I didn't know I had to pay taxes. Oh my god! Yeah, so you're like, he's like, I didn't even know that. Like, I thought like I made four million dollars a year, and like I had four million dollars to spend. And they're like, no, like you, you don't get all that money. And he just like didn't know. So, anyways, he was famously just like, just he lost it all. Okay, so but yeah. he still has like a mansion and all this stuff. He's not apparently like she's saying apparently he filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, he has a nice house or whatever. But uh, I guess what she's saying, I watched some thing with her today before this, and she's like, yeah, we're almost like getting kicked out of our place all the time, and he doesn't have that much money coming in, so I had to just like go ahead and like he wouldn't listen to me. And the funniest thing, you'll love this. She's like, I'm an entrepreneur. I start businesses. One of the businesses I started is a moving company. <laughs> So if you want to know about fucking women-run moving companies, this porn former star porn star has a moving company. <laughs> she goes, she goes, okay, we're gonna move that. Uh, she just, this is how she picks up stuff. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> suctions it to her lips, and then fucking. <laughs> well, I got, I got the video. I'll play it. So basically, this guy, he's got this porn star girlfriend. Now she stopped doing porn, and then he basically find his wife starts on OnlyFans. And then he finds out from everyone being like, yo, your chick's like showing some fucking muff she, on Well, he, she says he found out from some chick who's trying to snake the relationship. So she's like, there's some chick who's trying to like basically get take my spot. So ratted me out. But, I'm surprised she didn't find out earlier. But I'm like, also, how did he not know that she had an old... She's like, the link's in my Instagram. Well, she's bio. also trying to promote it because she's doing this video. Of course. Imagine he comes in, she he gets mad at her and she's filming him and stuff like that. So this guy's going through it. Yeah, the question... What I'm, a nightmare. Did, yeah. I I mean, this is the. I mean, there's a term for it. There's a very small percentage trying of trying to make we're a, all getting played. A housewife. Yeah. Yeah. There's a percentage of that, but I don't know. I don't think so. The guy. I, the guy doesn't seem like he wants this happening. No. I think that Who this guy I? is not happy about this. So I'm gonna play a little bit of it to see show what this guy is going through right now. Listen, it's not fucked up, and we're going. He's in to, the room. Okay. Look. So. I have an OnlyFans page, and he's mad because he's just now finding out about it. Of course I'm mad I'm just finding but out about it. I'm not <laughs> doing it with anybody but myself, it so why should I have to tell you my choice, my body, my body, my fucking choice? Hitting him with the my body, my choice. So this girl's on all the stuff, you know what I mean? Yep. Once you start getting hit with like the activist language when you're in a fight... He's Ooh. like, what does that even mean? He's probably like, what does that mean? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. My body, my choice. Because I'm not going to be with the OnlyFans. Well, though. you can say that I about mean, anything. She wasn't porn, though, so it's not like the crazy. Okay, I banged departure. a girl. My body, my choice. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah, yeah, that's insane. I just banged a bunch of strippers. My body, my choice. Once you start getting hit with the activist language, you start saying, you start getting that combo of porn star selling their body, uh, doing stuff you don't want to like. Uh, and then sort of fusing that yeah. with feminism to just make this despicable combination, <laughs> <laughs> just this concoction of uh, dread yeah. that being around would be a nightmare to. You don't want that. No, no. It's Megatron. About mad things, I've been asking for solutions to shit. You're not giving me none, so I created one. That's no solution, not in my book. That's no you solution. knew, you knew who the fuck I was when you met me before. Hitting them with that. I mean, the question is, when she says solution, you're like, okay, well, how much, well, how much solutions are we talking about here? Like, are we talking hundred grand a month? Or are we talking like two thousand a month? Definitely, what kind of solutions are we talking about? It's definitely <laughs> on the table. But when girls start hitting you with the, uh, you know, like you could never hit someone with, you know, you go, I just disappeared for a year, and she goes. What the fuck? You you haven't even talked to me. Like we're supposed to be married, and you just went on a trip. You're not answering your phone. You go, you know, I, you knew before we ever met <laughs> yeah. that I told you I'm a wild guy. I had that dog in me, I, and you knew that about me. Like you can't you can't go back and be like you knew that I'm a wild dude. I'm a wild I'm a wild oh, man. man. Did you not look at me in the eyes? Did you or did you not know my level of wild note? Feel bad for him, man. This guy's getting fucking the business. One yeah. last little part. Before, before yeah, before, before man, yeah, I, and I thought that. that I would never have to go. To That's enough. Yeah. So, this guy is going through it right now. Sorry, Joe. I apologize. Yes, I apologize on behalf of their gender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
But that is a nightmare to be living in where uh, the girl's like, okay, we'll get married and then I'll stop being like a porn star. And then anytime you slightly do anything wrong, it's like, maybe I'll just go start rocking to a party. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Living under that, uh, basically... Uh, you're living under... <laughs> it's like, you're, it's like extor extortion. Almost. You're living under occupation. Yeah. I don't know what kind of occupation <laughs> it is, but occupational occupation. Uh, sex worker? That's the occupation. You're living under sex worker or occupation, but you're basically, yes. Any Anytime you're doing anything wrong, it's like, I'm going to be, uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a little late for dinner. It's like, well, maybe I'll just fucking put my tits on. <laughs> yeah, let me just fire up the OnlyFans account. It's oh, you're gonna be, oh, okay. You don't want to go see my mom tonight? Well, I guess I'll fuck up my titties online. So, <laughs> save your money, people. What do you say? Save your money on what? For Joe Smith. Oh, save your money. What? I don't get it. I'm saying if he didn't blow all oh, his fucking money, he wouldn't be in this predicament. Correct. But that is when you start looking for ones that are gold digging. That gold starts drying up. You know that you, you ever seen a miner? You ever seen an old video of a miner digging for gold? Yeah. You ever see the uh, miner digging for gold, but they're not finding any gold? Mm, Let me ask yeah. you a question: Is that a happy camper? Is that a not <laughs> no, happy camper? No. So you start. No. You put these got. You put these people out to. Uh, they're out in the mines. They got their little gold pan in the river. They start saying, "They go it's rocks. We got one. We got a sucker right now. This this is filled to the brim with gold. You know, five six years starting past. I think we might have got it all. Seven eight nine years starting past. She's out there in the cave. Yeah." So, Titties are fucking <laughs> like I might have some fucking gold in myself, some fucking black gold. Yeah, yeah. Poor Joe. You ever see that meme where um they uh they say that you know the the poor person's wife doesn't work yeah. and then the medium person's wife works, uh rich person's wife uh doesn't work, and then really rich person's wife has a business that loses ten grand yeah, a year. Yeah. I was thinking that Jeff it was just making me laugh the idea of Jeff Bezos's wife. She had a business that lost forty billion in a year. <laughs> she came. She goes. I got this brilliant business. She goes. Okay. So listen to this. We just give the money away, right? And they go. Okay. Then what? And you go. That's the whole. That's model. the whole business. That's the whole business model. It's a thing of uh, what is it? It's like an abundance. Principle. It's an abundance mindset. It's abundance mindset. We put money out, and then money will come back. <laughs> Right, we go. But how? He goes. It's the universe. Uh, do you Jeff. not know about the fucking universe? You don't know about the universe, Jeff. So on the topic of OnlyFans, there's a couple wild ones this week. Um, so this bar owner was left devastated after bold OnlyFans move fails to save the business. Bold. <laughs> well, I should have put this in the bravery pack. Bold. Because <laughs> that is bars going under. What, what can we do? I have an idea. How about I suck a thousand dicks <laughs> for money and see if that'll save the bar? And it's like a really crappy like her husband's like, movie. okay, I don't like that one. <laughs> uh, okay. Is there any like legitimate way? Maybe you know what? Bar related. Let's, let's just put a pin in that one. <laughs> she goes, listen to this. Okay. Let's table that idea for she a goes, second. We're not selling enough lager. How about I put a hole in the wall and then suck all the dicks that come through <laughs> for money? No, I, I like that you're coming up with ideas. This is a creative session, so I don't want to yeah, down it, but. but she goes it's technically a bar solution because the hole will be at the bar okay definitely and i'm open to those kind of ideas so i do not want to discourage and he's like he's like yeah maybe uh what if we try and cut costs first maybe the issue is our costs cut, our overheads cost, are overheads cost cut cut what mm. if i cut off my shirt <laughs> <laughs> No. Think what if more I business cut, decisions? Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> She's just picking up the tools, looking at the wall. <laughs> what if I could knife out a hole in this? Okay, yeah, we're back to the glory yeah, hole, and that's kind of the same as your other idea. All right. But it is funny, though. It's just the idea of, like, it's just, I've got it. Um, I guess she can't call herself a bar owner, though. Once they close the bar, she can't be like, oh, I'm a bar owner who just does OnlyFans on the side. The bar closes. You're OnlyFans person that used to have a bar. Yeah, it's really just a front. I think you go point. with retired bar owner. Yeah, not just OnlyFans chick. A bit of a reverse cheers guy, <laughs> Ted Danson. Yeah. You should quit the bar for your true passion. Yeah. Well, the funny part is uh, just the idea of like having the epiphany that uh, this is the move. But like, but more importantly, if it works, if you're making a hundred grand a year and your bar is losing ten thousand dollars a month, you'd just be like, "Here's a fucking crazy idea. Just close the bar down." Of course, obviously. Well, but some people don't want to do that. Some people. But don't I guess give up on the dream of the bar. Well, what would you? Okay, I'll tell you what. 
if this podcast, if we are sitting here and we're going, listen, we got too many expenses. This fucking studio is costing us, even though it's brimming hot and they fucking won't are, shut up. They everywhere. won't shut up. They're <laughs> they're literally drilling on every wall. I think they're putting glory holes in this thing, <laughs> costing us a fucking arm and a leg. We got all these expenses, and then we go. I don't think we're making the money to keep this operation going. And then you go, unless unless. <laughs> I have one crazy idea. No, you're working in a catcher's mitt, and you go, see this? <laughs> you go, what is it? You go, a ball. <laughs> see where I'm getting at right now? Anything? Anything? <laughs> you go, ball, 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 ball. People will pay to see my balls. <laughs> no? What are we talking here? <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. <clears throat> The dude definitely having the idea would not work. And by the way, I'm just going to say a quick thing that I'm not trying to, I will, I don't want to trash her ability to be an entrepreneur and try to start a bar because it is a very hard business. For sure. And Fuck on them. top of that, especially in New York, they fuck with you so much. Uh, like, I don't think that I got a, I'm sure that we have an audience of people that are somewhat on board with the fact that like the government's out to get you. Yep. But like. Dude, I know people that started bars because we know especially a lot of comedy club owners and a lot of normal bar owners. The things they do. So these people are paying like 20 grand a month in rent, right? Restaurants. And then they'll, they'll be just like, we got to get your liquor license. And then they'll just be like, oh yeah, well, we'll get to it when we get to it. And it'll be like four months where they just won't have their liquor license. It costs them like a hundred grand. Dude, it I just did a show in uh, New Jersey on the weekend and it's at this theater and the guy, like a year and a bit ago, they don't have, a, it's in this dry town that's no longer dry. And so he's like, they, they changed it. But they had uh, Gavin McInnes and uh, Kumia come there to do a, just a comedy night at this like little theater thing. And then they got protested and canceled. Okay. And the town's like politicians he's like hate me so now over this thing so then now he's like literally we apply for this liquor license and every month they just like forget to add it to the docket that's corrupt as shit he's like they get and or he's like or there'll be like some clerical error and he's like every month he's like so they keep having some excuse and it's purposely they're just sort of and every every month you're bleeding 25 huge sums of money and they're just like oh sorry like it just it didn't get to the right stamp person or whatever so but we'll get it next month sorry about that and, people then should the, be in jail. and then the next month yeah, yeah oh yeah that's fucking corruption as high as card Old Ryan Long, not a big fan of the red tape. Well, especially in an industry where 30% of them fucking make it. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's already hard enough as is. You know that near your house? Or Punishing like, the fucking mom and pop like guy starting a bar. Dude, near where we live, uh, or like the uh, that Panda Express. It was literally took them two and a half years to open that thing. It just said it's opening soon for like over two years. That's true. Yeah, remember? Like, didn't you ever find that weird? You go, what is going on here? Yeah, it is it's like a fucking fast food Chinese joint. Why can't this open? Because it's, it's red tape. You nail, hit the nail on the head. And I'll tell you what. I was saying that Airbnb dropped the fucking bag and I don't like him anymore. Yeah. You know what's crazier? I told you this, but I, I, ta Uber did the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. But did I mention this to you already? Uh, I don't think I said it on the podcast, no, no, but no, no. I've started and I never do this. I've been penalizing oh, yeah, Uber yeah. drivers with tips <laughs> that speak in a different language the entire time. I can't. Oh. The, <laughs> Someone, can you just please uh, clip that and then just remove entire time? <laughs> <laughs> uh. So the reason why I pay for an Uber yeah. is because I want to do work in the car, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like 30 grand, 30, 30, 40 bucks or something like that, right? Yeah. But I'm like, okay, I can do stuff in that sure. cab ride, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then they talk, some of these guys are full volume for the entire time. And then to combat it, sometimes what I'll do is I'll play a video full volume. So we just battle it out. <laughs> and they just give And I never, I don't, I still don't give them a low rating because I don't want to like really mess their stuff up. Yeah. I feel like that's rude. Uh -huh. But I do. You you're not obligated to give them a tip. But I, it is weird, though, because the only way you can tell them it's because of that is because you give them a low rating. Because uh -huh. if you give them a low rating, there's an option to say that they were talking on the phone the whole time. Because okay. they're not really supposed to. No. But it's like once in a while. But it's like, I just don't even... Why do you want to talk to your wife for the entire day anyway? They're probably just like, dude, I'm not talking to my wife. I'm talking to one of the boys. <laughs> Back in Kabul. Um, yeah. I mean, you're, you're. I feel bad for doing it. I wish I didn't have to. I mean, the problem is, I hate is, that, that is that poor's unfortunately do not because rich people don't have this problem because they're in their limo and they just have the button that just goes. Brrr, 
and you just put up the divider. But regular cars don't have the divider. I know. I guess the answer is people are probably saying, "Well, pay for the more expensive one if you want a quiet but ride." Even but even does that like it, there's no the you know Uber Black? It's just still no divider. I think the Uber Black guys have a bit more level of like not they don't do. Yeah, it there's more like professionalism, a yeah. little more professionalism versus this dude who's just like, "Yeah, I'm just heading uptown, and giving you a ride." Like I don't. It's just. But they're not though. They are professional drivers. They just don't have these cars. I just feel like if someone, they, their business model would be better. Your two options right now, mm -hmm. with a guy talking on the phone the whole time or a cab driver getting in a literal fist fight on your ride. Yeah. Every time I take a cab, the guy almost, like, he gets in a yelling match halfway through the ride. <laughs> Happened to me the last two times I took a cab. The guys are at the lights. He's like, you fucking piece of shit. You don't know how to tell me what. You're going to get fucking rear-ended. And yeah. then he goes, he goes, can you believe these guys? And I'm like, I mean, you're I, also I, I, yelling at the top of your I lungs. was in a cab a few months ago where legitimately like some car, he, the, the car hit him. It was just like it was like one of those things where like a car just really? like, they were just like yeah and then the car just like banged into the side of the cab and he's like what the fuck and then like literally drew, drove off they didn't even like didn't even stop or anything hmm. it was just like a straight hit and run and I was just like in the car and I go that was crazy and the guy goes <laughs> ah fucking New York it's getting colder some of you might have noticed that the holiday season's creeping up people are already taking down the Halloween putting up mm -hmm. the Christmas and you might be looking for nutritious convenient meals to keep you energized on your jam-packed days factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service can help you fuel up fast for breakfast lunch dinner with chef prepared dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door you'll save time you eat well and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling the holiday to-dos so I'm a big factor guy myself. Uh, the Protein Plus is what I've been mainly going for because that's what I'm looking yeah, at. You're getting that protein. Get those swole I, lines. I actually have been getting mainly the protein. Yeah. Uh, there's a pork chop I've been working my way through. Mostly probably chicken ones. The chicken breast is the shit. They got beans. They got broccoli. That always comes with a green. Well, not, I, that might not be true. That always, but most of them come yes, with a green. Yeah, yeah. It's a well-balanced meal. Skip the stress and meal prepping over the holidays with Factor. Choose from 35-plus weekly flavor-packed, never-been-frozen meals and support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. All delivered right to your door and ready to eat in two minutes. And also in the box, they've got these mechanisms that keep it cold. Yeah. It's kind of interesting that they've developed for that. And if you're looking for calorie-conscious options over the holidays that also taste great, try the delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. So they're not messing around here from keto to calorie smart vegan and veggie protein plus like i said get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle simply choose your meals enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes no prep no mess head to factormeals.com slash boyscast50 and use the code boyscast50 for 50 percent off that is code boyscast50 at factormeals.com slash boyscast50 to get 50 percent off now, this time of year, some of you might have some bad habits that you're trying to get rid of. And no better time. It's getting cold. There's a certain bad habit that some of you guys might be doing. And that's why we got to tell you about fume. Cold turkey might be great on sandwiches. But listen, there might be a better way to break up your habits. And we're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor. We're talking about fume. They look at the problem in a different way. Because not every bad habit's wrong. Obviously, working out would not be a bad habit. No. Right? No, it would Obviously, not. Uh, Stand-up comedy actually probably would be a bad yeah, habit. Pretty so destructive for your life. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. If you're looking to change a certain habit that, you know, as you know, we're not supposed to say in this no, ad read. Sir. But I think we all know what we're talking about here. And you want to change that. Instead of electronics, fume is a completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. They've got cores. You just pop them in there. I got a bunch of them, and I do it while I'm editing, and you get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial. It's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you're breaking your bad habit so this is dual action if not tree action the taste is great the feels cool the look is cool 
And stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and fun. It's got over 100,000 customers and thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. So try it out at tryfume.com with the code BOYSCAST to save 10% when you pick up the journey pack today. T-R-Y-F-U-M and use the code BOYSCAST. Tryfume.com to save 10%. 10% off your order today. Head to trifume.com slash boyscast to save an additional 10% off your order today. Well, okay, so the other part of it was this girl uh, goes, I made 9.5 a month selling my armpit hair online, Ugh. but there's a downside. It is really gross, right? 9,500. 9, what did I say? You said 9.5, just, just as a... I said 9.5K. Oh, I didn't hear the K. Maybe I, I didn't. No. A 30-year-old woman, but it, it gets better than that. A 30-year-old woman has made close to a million thanks to her armpit hair and has revealed that success has come at a price. So she's sort of doing a, like, she's got like a hustle and grind mindset, but it's about her selling her armpit hair. She goes, she went viral uh, talking about how she developed digital vertigo from spending up to 14 hours a day. What I, is digital vertigo? Well, I know what vertigo is, yeah. but she's saying she got vertigo from uh, looking at her phone too much, running her armpit hair business, and she's... Uh, how do you does it, how does you sell armpit hair? Like I was reading this article, I actually couldn't figure this out. How many uh, like, how much armpit by, hair are you selling? Like yeah. is it by weight? Do you wait it? Is it like a strand of armpit hair? Is it a strand? That's I actually was legit wondering that. Like how how does how do you do that? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, it not. wasn't in the article. I was like, I read it top to bottom. Me like, where is this indication? <laughs> what, and what, sometimes they'll link to like a different article where we'll explain it, and there's none, none of that. And you're trying to get a little bag for yourself, you know yeah. what I'm saying? For allegedly becoming bedridden and struggled to walk properly, she relies on a wheelchair now. So now she's in a wheelchair from her armpit hair selling business, according to her. It's tough out there. <laughs> it's tough being an entrepreneur, you know? <laughs> so she's... She's basically, she's going to like other entrepreneurs, like going to uh, the schools and being like, success comes at a price. <laughs> she goes, I was like you. I used to walk around. Now look at me. I'm in a wheelchair. You think, are you, sell, you think sink, selling armpit hair is easy? Yeah. You Do you have no what idea. it takes? Are you willing to sacrifice everything to make a million dollars off these strands? I like these sweet, sweet strands. I think there should be some sort of auditing for this stuff. I would really like to know. What we're, is she really making a million bucks? I mean, I, I, I'll tell you what I definitely don't think. I don't think the armpit hair business put her in the wheelchair. <laughs> I think she's jumping to a few <laughs> conclusions there. I'd like to see her on Dragons or whatever, Shark Tank <laughs> or something. I always say Dragons on the Canadian one. But I'd like to see her on Shark because that's like an amazing business. You have literally like... Low, o low overhead. Literally no overhead. The only thing you're constrained by is how fast your armpit hair can grow. And she probably takes growth hormone. Or yeah, but you probably can pills. like do something to make it grow a little faster. And then also probably you're like, yeah, we could just like use someone else's armpit hair and like <laughs> kind of like... Maybe you touch it. She said she's been on... T and also, it's not... There's also haters like you. There's always going to be haters. Yeah, I'm a hater. She goes, I am a proud hater. She's been attacked online and in person. So I don't think she's been attacked in person. No. And so there's... Well, I get... Maybe it's possible. It's like a shakedown where someone comes... I hear you're selling armpit hair on our turf sort of thing. <laughs> like there's armpit hair turf wars yeah, situation where she fair. goes, pal. He goes... You want to sell fucking armpit hairs to those, you know, to the people in Tennessee? You want to be selling armpit hair to New York Cityers? India is my fucking turf. <laughs> so okay? The Indians, the Persians are having a giant turf war. Yeah, that's my turf. <laughs> I don't want to... I don't... And listen, there's a lot of people buying armpit hair. There's enough business to go around. But if I fucking hear you crossing buddy, that... Buddy, 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 buddy. Selling your pet hair on the wrong place, buddy. <laughs> My friend, my friend, my friend. Buddy. I can put you in. The, I can put you back in that wheelchair. It's <laughs> fucking faster than you can say clip clip. So she's in a wheelchair from her selling her armpit hair. I think that's because she got kneecapped by the competitors. <laughs> she got was it Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan? Yeah, you're never gonna sell in this fucking town again. All right. So this is, but it doesn't go on for so. This is just to recap where we're at right now. She made a million bucks from her armpit hair. Yeah. Put her in a wheelchair because she has vertigo so bad that she can't stand up or leave her bed. Sure. The vertigo is from the constant uh, sell, 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 sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
She's just yeah, she's just spinning from all the sales. Success comes at a price. This grind is not free. Do you have what it takes? Are you ready to give up everything for your dream? It's sad too. Sacrifice it, everything. Some idiot probably read this thing and go like some girl and go, I could sell my armpit hair and then it's having the reverse effect, yeah. Yeah. Just putting other people in a wheelchair. There's a bunch of I think that's but what you do. Probably not Next time I see a fucking old lady in a wheelchair, I'm just gonna be like Selling armpit hair ain't easy, huh? <laughs> what? The armpit hair fucking hair. The armpit hair sales game will do that to you. Tough. Tough, tough. Hey, I, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go. <laughs> He's in a wheelchair. He's going, it's tough business. <laughs> what? It's a tough business. <laughs> ain't that the truth? <laughs> You think this is easy, so it's not over. She's also said it gave her PTSD. <laughs> oh my god! So she says she has she has PTSD also from the arm hair business. So she's basically saying like, she she's, this, this girl also should have been in the bravery section. <laughs> yeah, this is hell for her. But she's like, I guess simps need the armpit hair from her. But yeah, that's what it is. It's like ten veterans and then her at the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I just she thinks she's doing such a noble thing. She's well, she like, walks by like a me. barber shop and she sees someone just doing like a clip of a hair and she goes, "Ah!" Oh. She's just getting flashbacks like she was in Nam, which is not. You know, she has flashbacks of being in Nair, Nair. Isle. <laughs> the Nair Isle. Not the Nair. <laughs> she had a Nair accident one time and the armpit hair was completely unsellable. <laughs> Not definitely. She is. This is. I'm having bad. flashbacks from when I was in calm. Calm. What's calm? OnlyFans.com. <laughs> when I was selling my armpit hair. This is crazy because this shit makes the farts and jars seem like actually kind of reasonable. No, I think the farts and jars is crazy in armpit. Crazier hair. than armpit so? hair? I don't know. It's kind of grosser. I mean, they're both gross. Sillier. Though. Yeah. At least there's like a little funny, like tongue in cheek thing with the farts and jars. This is just gross. Also, that Amarath girl. That's the thing. It's the, the, the women like that are doing the taking off. Uh, they're doing the like strike. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The president's the president of the country's on strike until women get more money. Um, it's like, listen, fine if you want to do that stuff, but you you can't have it both ways. If you're gonna be striking and saying you get more money, you also gotta quit selling your armpit hair and yeah, farts. Yeah, full embargo. It's a full embargo, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. You can't be selling your armpit hair and farts and then, you know, telling your husband if he doesn't make more money, I'm going to be selling my titties online. You can't be doing all that stuff. It's, you know, it's a little bit yeah. of a two way street. You know what I mean? Yep. Talking and Amarath, it's the same person. She's kind of like, I've been sexualized and stuff like that. Now she's making a beer from her yeast from her yeah. vag. Gross. Can you imagine bringing a case over that to the game? <laughs> Boys are bringing the game and bringing a can case of the Amarath vagina beer. I should it's not going to be cheap. I guess the simps, though, like if you're a real simp. You uh, like the uh, honestly, I'm not. Imagine the guy being like, I'm not a simp. I just like the taste. Yeah, I just like the taste. I'm trying to can, Your wife go, what the fuck are you buying? What? <laughs> is this? <laughs> this is really? What? Oh, I just... What? Just read on my favorite hop blog that this is the best new beer out there. You're telling me? Tuh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was looking at our credit card statements. What is uh, 12 cases of uh, <laughs> vagina beer? Ugh. Yeah, they basically take a fucking bit of her vagina shit and then they. That like, works? Well, they. I think they clone it so it's like the same. It yeah, I don't know. I guess yeast is yeast or something. I have no yeah, I guess fucking idea. Grow, I don't know. It's nasty shit. Well, the moral of the story is that you can't have it both. Completely have it both ways, ladies. Get your act together. Stop they want it though. Hair. You tell the ladies that because the ladies want it both ways. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're not like okay. And there's these dudes who. That's the sketch that uh, uh, the UFC guy Sean Strickland posted was the OnlyFans. Uh, I, I'm the I'm the messenger guy who messages oh, yeah, the OnlyFans yeah, yeah, girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these guys have this OnlyFans business and they're trying to like kind of legitimize it, uh -huh. right? Because they're not they're they're like no we're like it's a, honest work. It's honest work, but it's funny. They go so the chatters anonymously hired to ghostwrite messages and they go, but they're pitching their business like we're the real deal. They go we don't sell erections tits or orga. We don't sell erections. Tits or orgasms, we sell smiles. The same smile you get when you finish watching Avatar for the first time or see a beautiful sunset. You get that feeling when you connect to another person online. This is their fucking bitch. <laughs> but it's yeah, just right? so funny being an inspirational thing when you go, you know, I'm just here for smiles. This is an honest day's living, and we just want to see the more another smile on your face, another happy customer. Anyways, I'm planning on goggling your <laughs> cop tonight. 
Like you're talking I about. Can't tell if this is a win for the boys or not. I don't think it's a win for the boys. But the boys are the ones doing the job. But well, then they're also, of guess but then they're also scamming other boys. They're scamming other boys, but they're also. I don't think it's a win for the boys. You got fucking nine boys locked in a room, fucking for <laughs> twenty bucks an hour, telling guys you're gonna gag on their dick. <laughs> That's a good point. It's an old Wonderland. They're calling it Wonderland is an OnlyFans management agency. They really they're putting the the music underneath, being like, "Welcome, yeah, to the first day of the rest of your life." I mean, for the girls, are probably like that's the thing they probably want to do the least is have to talk to the guys. They work with content creators on the platform, and the same thing is see. There's no difference. Between me sitting at home, messaging lonely men, telling them, you know, all the nasty things I'm going to do to them, mm -hmm. is seeing a beautiful sunset. Yep. There are account managers assigned to 10 or 15 creators. Beneath them, they got chatters. So they got a whole pyramid right now, right? And I guess the chatters, that would be weird just being in like a room with 15 different dudes just talking to other dudes, telling them all the fucking nasty things you're going to do with them all day long. Ugh. He explains they work eight-hour shifts and they're assigned the inboxes of three or four creators at a time. Telling them how badly you want to get railed. <clears throat> Sweet God. Just, you know, we just a job <laughs> like any other. You kiss your wife goodbye. <laughs> you, sock, you clock in. Well, you, you know. You say gay-ass shit to dudes all day. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, I guess it's like uh, if you're working on one of those phone sex hotlines. It's like maybe the modern-day equivalent. Yeah, but dudes didn't do that with a woman's yeah, voice. Oh, yeah, not with a woman's voice. But there was, if you, did you ever see that movie CB4? Remember that with, with yeah. uh, Chris Rock? And their boy is like, he's working. He's just like some dude. He's just working. He goes, I want to gargle your balls. <laughs> he's like, not gay. He just has, that's just what he does. <laughs> no, I'm not gay. I'm not gay. It's just a job. It's called having a job. Yeah, it's just, you know, take care of yourself. So, you know, we've been talking a little bit about... Um, you know that uh, I'm not the hugest fan of the Bill Maher types, uh, yeah. just constantly shitting on the younger generations sure. or whatever. Yeah, the kids these days. Yeah, so they did an article. Ray Dalio, who we actually want to get on the podcast. He he kind of did this that. thing, and uh, there's a bunch of other people have chimed in on it. But they said the great wealth transfer isn't 72 trillion, but 129 trillion, and the government gave most of it to baby boomers, right? Yeah, and. There is something to be said about they're just kind of like, you know, the last like five presidents were baby boomers. Joe Biden's from like the generation that they call the traditionalists. Yeah. A couple of these guys, a couple of these guys are from the generation before the baby boomers. Yeah. But like they've essentially, I mean, you could probably chime in on this too, but they essentially did just nonstop policies that made baby boomers a lot richer mm -hmm. at the expense of everyone else. Yeah. And it's kind of like the one thing that almost doesn't get talked about enough because it's like, there is, uh, there's just like a certain level of, it's probably nothing that annoys me more than someone over, you know, 60 kind of being like, these people are lazy when they had a way better deal and they, their generation has made policies that screwed over the, yeah, like, for even if it's not until you, if they can even argue it wasn't intentionally, it's just like, that's what happened. Well, it's not intentionally, but I think that the idea of not thinking about it, like, okay, so if you're a parent and you have your kid and you go. Well, I didn't intentionally like spend their college tuition or not save up. And you go, okay, but you think they would be in the picture like the next generation, not just a cute. You go, who do you think's going to pay off that debt? Like when you're seven, you go, okay, we have a lot of debt. I don't give a shit. We're dying, right? Uh -huh. So there's just like a crazy amount of debt. They basically. The debt situation in America is crazy. Like, yeah. And then sort of the other parts of it was all of the tax stuff is like constantly going up. So it's like you essentially, I mean, it's taking the ladder down after you. It's the same thing that, and obviously there's millennials that are complicit in it or even calling for it. But, you know, just the idea of um, you basically get rich uh, on low taxes. And then once you're rich, you say the taxes should be higher. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's, I mean, it's especially the real estate, because most of the people, the boomers who are rich is just from their happen. They just buy a house that costs fucking Jack yeah, and a shit. lot of that is like especially fed, relative to when and a lot of that's like Fed intervening to keep the interest rates like you know yeah. appetizing for them. Yeah, well they got a, real, a, house of be a real house of cards. Yeah, and then you know there's a ballooning debt. It was the interest rate stuff. You know, education w used to cost way less. Uh, there was you know inflated housing market. There's basically like a ton of stuff, and all of it combined is just them basically racking up a bill that the next generation has to pay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and then and on, on top like, of that, the only like politicians they set for that are like you can vote for are 80 yeah and then on top of that calling you lazy so that's the part where i'm like i listen i don't uh, if you're gonna do all this shit at the very least uh i don't want you to fucking be talking shit to me after mm -hmm. you do it yeah yeah it would be nice to get some like a young president 
it's not gonna happen this time around but yeah i don't think it's gonna happen either no um there's okay but there, this is one more thing i'll say is there's a bit of a you know how we've been kind of saying that the israel palestine thing was almost like one of the last death blows to intersectionality yeah so i've been seeing this a little bit but the final death blow to intersectionality will be a breakup between white women and gays. Ooh. Like, that's the final one, right? And this article, they've, I've started to see them pop up a little bit, right? And it goes, help, straight women are ruining my gay bar. So if, if, if you got a beef between, you know, social justice and essentially uh, the media, mm -hmm. and now you got a beef between gays and women... This thing, we're done. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the death knell, if you will. A break between white women and gays is the final nail in the coffin. And basically, gay dudes are realizing that they don't like having a bunch of clucking hens. And you, and I know what you're thinking. Took you long enough to get here, gay guys. <laughs> you know, well, probably they welcomed their like support initially. Like Initially, the w white women were like, hey, we'll like help you with your causes. And the gays exactly. had a cause. And so they're like, well, welcome. Anybody. We both have causes. We both have causes. I mean, obviously, you left so, but we won't say that. And then uh, and then the gays were like, okay. And then finally, they're like, wait, are, we th are they just kind of using us because they don't really have a thing? And they're just kind of just co-opting our thing. Uh-oh. Uh yeah. I mean, as comedians, you can probably say there's nothing more annoying than a bachelor party. That is a, a bachelorette party. That's they tops. show up to a comedy party. They were, they, they were the cliche of what you don't want at a comedy they show. They those stupid little like dick and ball like lollipops. You go, real clever, ladies. Real clever. You fucking hacks. And they're taking that hack act over to the gay club. Yeah. And the gays are starting to be like, hey, I came here to blow a dude indiscriminately. Yeah. Also, the gays people are probably coming around to like, they're like, yeah, we, we kind of got all our rights. There's there's no rights <laughs> we have anymore. We're actually so. cooking. Yeah. They're like, how long are we just going to be like, not, you know. Beat it. We're pretending we don't have rights and stuff. Beat it, ladies. Yep. And, and the straight dudes are like, hey, listen, if we didn't have to smash them, we'd say the same thing, man. <laughs> all the power to you. Dear Prudence, my friends and I notice our local gay bar has been getting more and more straight women showing up. They're not coming in for us. They're coming in because they want a fun night without the pestilence of unsolicited attention by straight men. So they're still, the gay guys are still like, hey, listen, we know it's the straight men's fault. Like, you know, they, they kind of know better than to go straight up attack them. They're, yep. hey, listen, it's probably the white ones are worse. Like, they're, they're still, hey, listen, we're on your team. We know the white ones are the worst ones. So the black ones are, they don't do any of this stuff. Nope. And also, we're well aware that the only reason you have to be here is because men that aren't gay like us are really bad. Yeah. That being said, beat it. <laughs> Scram. <laughs> you ever heard of just a woman's club? Get out. Beat it. Yeah. It would be fine if they kept to themselves, but when they come in with their friends, they get drunk and they have get loud and then they start to get handsy. And suddenly us gays are dealing with the pestilence, pestilence of unsolicited attention. Like pestilence. Pestilence. <laughs> that is, that is a plague. <laughs> a white woman plague. So some of these gay guys are starting to see these women and being like, hmm, hmm. maybe there was another sign on that story. Hey. They, go, hey they, call, they call their straight friend and they go, I'm sorry that I said everything was your fault and these <laughs> girls were amazing. It's their fault. <laughs> hey, they're a bit much, huh? And gay, they do do that. But by the way, gays will do it to girls too. But they'll be just like, grab, you know, g girls have no tr problems like slapping a gay dude's ass and gay guys have no problem grabbing a girl's tits. Yeah. And yeah. you'll always be like, hey, pal, yeah. keep your fucking hands off the table. Get your fucking teeth kicked in. <laughs> The gay bar is the one gay safe place in the neighborhood, and now it's being invading by these straight women. What's your advice for how to deal with them? By afraid of losing my space. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This is a final nail, if you ever ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't. I wonder well, what's the solution though. Is there some sort of final one <laughs> for getting rid of the women? <laughs> and the final bravery was me. <laughs> Arguing online about the hockey player for the last yeah, <laughs> you know funny. That was a brutal. So there's a hockey player that died. Yeah, Adam Johnson, and he got uh, basically what happened is there was a hit, and then some people say that he kicked the guy, and his skate slit the guy's neck, and it's fucking brutal to watch. Yeah, right? yeah. Basically, the guy's skating across the ice, and then he like 
I don't know why. There's no reason like for anybody's skate to get that high. Well, my take unless on you it, maybe get like a hip check and then your center of balance is all fucked well, up. I didn't realize this sort of became a political thing, almost. You know, it so became a race thing. It became people, sort of like a which race. Is thing. Weird because you're like it obviously. Is and not I was right. sort of watching this. I've been playing hockey a long time, and I know that how fast people go at uh-huh. that speed, things happen like really fast. So I, my take, my interpretation was like, I don't think people realize how fast this goes. Yeah. Everyone I kind of know that plays hockey basically said the same thing, freak accident. But I, people were really not happy about me. And I think some of it is they're kind of like the media all immediately was kind of like, this is an accident. I think some people were kind of like, well, you know, everybody, quick to call yeah, well, it an Twitter, accident. everybody was like, this guy needs to be charged with murder. Yes. Or whatever. And you're like, there's, there's no intent here. And well, I, th- I didn't I think th- so. I think he may be like, th- look, I will say it doesn't bode well for the guy like he had been his the most penalty minutes in the league had been kicked out of two of the last four games that was a big part of it right so they go and like and i uh, understandable and i do think there's a potential where that guy was probably like maybe trying to get his knee up high like maybe like that's high, to and do then something dirty do something he was trying to do something that was definitely dirty dude to me and like then tr- it like i mean play, imagine like trying to kick someone with your blade of your skate just seems like but then so also insane to uh me. sean avery said he he did an interview and he's like the the blades they use now are titanium they used to use steel blades but they use these titanium blades he's like which are thinner and they're way sharper than they used to play with like 20 years ago but there is i can't remember what the goal has happened a few other times it's happened before there was a, there was a goalie uh in like the 80s you can watch it on youtube and like literally like he c- cuts an artery and it's like blood is like spurting out and every other people like get almost every wrists. other leagues um, where where um yeah, where neck uh guards. neck guards they're gonna right? try and i think they're making them i saw the carolina hurricanes ahl team is now mandatory and they're gonna start testing it in practices. every league until you start playing junior or nhl they wear face masks and neck guards yeah yeah and the face masks i mean visors are mandatory in the nhl which is not super recent but they are and then uh i, I don't know i can't imagine it'll encumber you too much to have the neck guard but i mean if that happened in the nhl that would be fucking brutal but i mean even pierre engvall uh who was on the leafs a few years ago he got his wrist or no not uh pierre engvall the russian guy uh, i can't remember his name soup something but uh he um he got his wrist slashed by a skate because he had just like those low gloves without the wrist protector and it was fucking blood everywhere. yeah yeah but yeah the neck is obviously different i mean the guy's shirt his jersey goes red like he's skating off and it's just like his jersey goes like this and he becomes totally red like it's crazy mm. yeah it was it's fucking nuts brutal, dude brutal. But yeah, that shit, like, oh, it's so crazy. But yeah, to me, the interpretation watching it, I was just like, I don't see how you would even in that split second think to, like, I get what you're saying, try to do something dirty, but the idea... Were you trying to behead the you've guy? You've never like, kicked anyone, so I, I, I think the argument for them is he just tried to kick him, but I was like, it feels to me like you would no. never, just playing hockey, you would never, like, even still, like, at yeah, that speed, like, you wouldn't even be no, able to get your, your leg Your body out. would have to, like, again, make your body would have to change, like, the angle, too, so when the, your leg is, like... And if you're going that fast, like, the littlest thing that hits you kind of, like, you know, yeah, you, yeah, I mean, you yeah, can yeah, kind sure. of see things like that, but... And I'm not trying to say that there isn't, you know, some reasonable people that actually believe that or anything like mm-hmm. that, and I'm sure that there's... I think most hockey players kind of came out and said it was an accident. I think there's a few that did, and they sort of retracted it or whatever, but maybe that's political, but, like... Um, and I'm not trying to say that everyone that saying I was wrong was like a guy wearing a bucket in his profile photo and everyone who was uh, everyone who disagreed with me had a, a American flag do rag yeah, on. Yeah. But like it was a little bit of that where it did feel like everyone I know who was like Canadian and played hockey were all kind of like not a chance that's yeah. like on purpose. And then everyone I know that was like, you look at his thing and it's like American Patriot and he lives in Texas, probably never played hockey, doesn't probably even watch hockey. He was Again, kind of like, that whole, the whole thing of when you like, if you watch it, it's like Adam Johnson's like kind of coming along the blue line and then the guy who did it, like he turns in and you're like, the whole thing was two seconds. Like at what point are you making this decision? You go, I'm going to fucking doesn't sl- make sense to slice me. this guy's neck. And they're saying, like, I guess they're saying he just has dirty instincts, but yeah. I feel like that wouldn't be one of them to like get your foot out and I'm like, get it because my definitely knee on knee is a dirty instinct. Like yeah, that that's is a, a thing instinct. in hockey. It's, it's, it's to try and stick your knee out, and that does happen even in the NHL. So maybe like if you tried to get your knee out, you like kind of put it out, then you get you kind of hit this guy's hip, you like turn. But again, you're like, there's no way that guy's like all this. He goes, I'm going to extend my leg and see if I can catch his neck. Like no way, wild dude. No way. Well. This is, I'll say it again, but this has been the 
uh, biggest period of growth uh, for our podcast in a little bit. So we appreciate everyone. We love you all. YouTube.com, uh, or sorry, uh, Patreon.com slash The Boys Cast. We do a bonus episode every single week. And we have a hot dog eating competition that is coming up as soon as we hit. Yeah, as soon as we hit 2,500 paid, we're so going to do a big hot dog eating, which is a half hour documentary on a hot dog eating competition. And if you've been and considering Derek. signing yeah. up, but you can't pull the trigger. You might want, if you want to see us, stuff our fucking faces with hot yeah. dogs. But it's a bonus episode every week, and we appreciate all the new listeners. It's been pretty cool yes, to sir. see a cool period of growth, and we appreciate you all. Thank you. Peace. Peace.